This is the right triangle trigonometry tutorial. In right triangle trigonometry, we deal with, obviously, right triangles. The trigonometry aspect is that we're using angles and side lengths to solve for missing pieces of information of this triangle. In right triangle trigonometry, we use three different formulas. They're the sine formula, cosine formula, and tangent formula. We'll begin this tutorial by teaching you about the sine formula. The sine formula relates the opposite leg length of one angle to the hypotenuse length. So let me tell you about that on this triangle on the left. We have the sine of x in this top equation. This is the angle x that we're referring to. The opposite leg length that I'm referring to now is opposite that angle x. So when you see opposite in trigonometry and right triangles, what they're referring to is the length that's opposite the angle you're referring to. So if I had been referring to angle y here, the opposite leg of angle y is actually leg y. Now the hypotenuse of a right triangle is always opposite the 90 degree angle. So it never changes. You can always refer to it as hypotenuse. Now it might be best to just show you a practice problem and explain where we get the sine information from. So what I'm going to do is bring in a practice problem down here on the bottom. Now in this practice problem we can see that we're missing leg length y and we're going to use the sine of y to solve for that. Now the reason I want to use the sine of y is because this leg length y is opposite that angle y right here. And we want to know the angle of y to get started. We can solve for the angle of y based on the information provided. Every triangle's angles add up to 180 degrees. So if angle z is 90 degrees and angle x is 30 degrees, then angle y must be 60 degrees. So, to solve for that side length y, I'm going to take the sine, and when we use this in our calculators, it's actually just abbreviated as SIN. So I'm just going to use that abbreviation for our math work as well. So we're going to use the sine of angle y, which in this case is 60 degrees, and we're going to set that equal to the opposite leg length of angle y, which has a length of y over the hypotenuse length, which is z in this case, or 13. All your work with right triangle trigonometry has to be done with your calculator. In the old days, they had these trigonometry tables with all these numbers, and it was very difficult. Now you've got your calculator. So in your calculator, you're just going to do the sine of 60 degrees. If you're unsure of how to do this, refer to our calculator tutorials to learn about right triangle trigonometry. So the sine of 60 degrees has a value of 0 0.866. If this isn't what your calculator gave you, go to your mode and make sure it's in degree mode, otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer. So the sine of 60 degrees is equal to 0 0.866. That's equal to y divided by 13. Well, we want to solve for y alone, so we want to get rid of that 13. So I'm just going to multiply it on both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side, the 13s are going to cancel, and you're going to have y. And on the left-hand side, you're going to have 11.26. Now, the sad truth to right triangle trigonometry is you're typically going to get decimal answers like this. You're not going to get nice, clean answers for the most part, and that's fine. The great part about it is you get to do most of the work in your calculator. So now that you have an idea of what sine is, let's look at cosine. So when we're using the cosine function, we're actually going to be comparing the adjacent leg length now over the hypotenuse, as opposed to the opposite like we did with sine. Now the two formulas I've written here are taking the cosine of x and taking the cosine of y, referring to this triangle here on the left hand side. Again, let's just bring in a practice problem so you can see how we use Here's our practice problem. It's set up just like our triangle here on the left, triangle x, y, z. Now again in this triangle, we know that angle x has a me measure of 30 degrees and angle z is a right triangle. 
which tells us that y has a value of 60 degrees. And using cosine of x, we want to talk about the adjacent leg length. Now, adjacent just means that it's touching, it's right next to what we're referring to. And it's adjacent to the angle that we're referring to. So if you're referring to angle x, what's adjacent to that angle is this leg right here. And if you're referring to angle y, what's adjacent to that angle is this leg right here. And yeah, the hypotenuse is adjacent to both those as well, but we don't call it the adjacent side because the hypotenuse is always hypotenuse. It's the side across from the 90 degree angle. So that's how you can identify adjacent, is there's only one real option for each of these angles. The other option is your hypotenuse, and that's not an option. So let's go ahead and solve for x in this case. For x, I want to know that it's adjacent to this angle right here, angle y. And we know that angle y has a value of 60 degrees, for the same reason we knew it was 60 in the previous problem. So I can use that information to solve for the adjacent side of angle y. And again, the adjacent side of angle y is side length x. So to set this up, we're going to use the cosine of angle y, because that has the leg that's adjacent to angle y, and that's x. So we have the cosine, and again, in your calculator, it's abbreviated as cos, C-O-S, so I'm just going to write it as cos here. The cosine of angle y, angle y being 60 degrees, is equal to the adjacent leg length, the leg length adjacent to angle y, which we've already established as x. And that's set over the hypotenuse length, and you know that the hypotenuse length is 13. So again, let's take cosine of 60 and plug that into your calculator. The cosine of 60 degrees has a value of exactly 0 0.5, and that's still equal to x over 13. We want to solve for x, so we're going to multiply by 13 on both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side, the 13s are going to cancel, and we're going to have x. On the left-hand side, you have 13 times 0 0.5, which is 6.5. So this length over here is 6.5. That's the value of using these trigonometric ratios, is that we can solve for these missing pieces of right triangle without having to use, use things like the Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's take a look at the last trigonometric ratio, which is the tangent function. Here's our tangent function. Tangent states that the tangent of angle x, in this case, is equal to the opposite leg length of x over the adjacent leg length of angle x. So if this is our angle x, what's opposite that leg length is side length x, and what's adjacent to that angle is side length y. Now if you're referring to tangent of angle y, angle y right here, what's opposite that angle is side length y, and what's adjacent to that angle is side length x. So let's take a look at a practice problem for this. In this problem, we're given that angle y has a measure of 71 degrees, and segment yz has a length of 4, while segment z, x, has a length of z. Let's use the tangent of y here. So tangent of y, and again, in your calculator, tangent is abbreviated T-A-N, so I'll do the same tangent of angle y, and angle y has a value of 71 degrees, is equal to the opposite length of the leg here. So the opposite leg length is, in this case, leg y of the triangle. And that length has a value of z over the adjacent leg length, which is right here. This leg is adjacent to angle y. And that length has a value of 4. So, go ahead and put tangent of 71 in your calculator. That has a value of 2.9. And that's equal to z over 4 still. We want to solve for z, so I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides of the equation. And we get 11.6 is equal to z. 
because the 4 is cancelled out over here. So this leg length is equal to 11.6. Now I'm going to teach you something that's a good way to remember this and you may have heard of it before. It's called SOKOTOA. SOKOTOA is an acronym to remember right triangle trigonometry. What it stands for is this. The sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the S is for sine, the O is for opposite, and the H is for hypotenuse. Cosine can be written as the cosine of angle A is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the C stands for cosine, the A is for the adjacent angle, and the H is for the hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. So the T is for tangent, the O is for the opposite leg, and the A is for the adjacent leg. Now I've created a lot of practice problems for this section because there's a lot to do around right triangle trigonometry. There's a lot of different ways the information can be presented. So you want to practice this a lot. You're going to see these triangles all over from here to the end of class and on the SAT and ACT. So it's something that you really want to have down well. I couldn't put all the problems in this tutorial just because it would have taken us forever. So go ahead and take a look at those problems and get a lot of practice regarding these.